A blintz is essentially a thin pancake that's filled with either a sweet or savory filling and it's sauteed just before serving to get the outside good and crisp. Now most food historians say that the blintz originated in Central Europe, but most cultures have some version of it. Think of the French crepe. But today we're focusing on the classic Jewish deli style cheese blintz with raspberry sauce. And today Lon's going to show us how to do it. Hi. Hi. So we're making blintzes today, mm -hmm. and they can seem a little intimidating because there are a lot of moving parts to them, but they're really easy. You can stop and start at any point, so they're a great make-ahead item, and we're going to start with the filling. All right. Filling. I've got 11 ounces of whole milk ricotta. This filling is normally made with a farmer's cheese, but that can be a little gritty. We like the creamy, mild flavor of the ricotta instead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add to it half a cup of confectioner sugar because it will dissolve readily and it won't be gritty in the filling. And this is two tablespoons of cream cheese. It's going to add just a little bit of tang. And last up, just a quarter teaspoon of salt just to season it. Let's just whisk that together. I'm just going to keep stirring it until it's smooth and I can't see any lumps of cream cheese. Mm. While we work on the rest, I'm going to pop this in the fridge. And this you can make two days in advance. Ooh, I like that. Next up, the raspberry sauce. Okay. I've got 10 ounces of frozen raspberries here, and I actually prefer frozen for this. You don't have to clean them, and as they defrost, they kind of fall apart into a sauce almost on their own. To this sauce, I'm adding just a quarter cup of granulated sugar. It just sweetens it a little bit, and of course, a quarter teaspoon of salt to season it. Crank the heat up to medium, and I'm gonna stir it occasionally as it cooks. By the time it comes up, it'll thicken slightly, and you'll have a perfect sauce. Mm. This is gonna take about eight minutes. If you want to check out this mm. sauce, those raspberries have melted down, it's lightly thickened, and I'm just going to set this aside. Looks good. Now we're moving on to the crepes. I'm going to start with two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Let's just whisk that together. And then our wet ingredients. I've got four eggs here. I'm going to add three cups of whole milk. That's a lot of milk. It is, but we want really thin pancakes. Right, because a thin batter makes thin pancakes. Right. Here, I have to whisk a little more carefully. You want to make sure you break up the eggs and there are no streaks so that you don't have weird egg streaks in your blitzes. This looks pretty great. I'm going to add half of it to the dry mixture because if I were to dump all of this liquid in right now, it would take forever to work out the lumps. Now you're working that batter pretty hard. Are you worried about over mixing it at all? Not really. One of the nice things about using so much milk is you don't have to worry about gluten development. They're gonna be nice and tender almost no matter what I do. And one of the things that keeps them tender is this butter. I've got three tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. This way you don't have to worry about the butter congealing and getting little butter lumps ah. that kind of melt away and leave holes in your crepes. Mm -hmm. It's almost like tempering the butter in. This looks great. I'm gonna add the rest. Here, can I pour it in for you? Oh yeah, please. Trying not to splatter all over the place. Right. As you can see, this is coming together, mm -hmm. and this is this is it. And how far in advance can you make this batter? Two days. Wow. Now let's go cook these. All right. I've got a 12-inch nonstick skillet here, and I'm going to brush just a tiny bit of melted butter. I've got a tablespoon here, and it'll be enough for all of the crepes that we make today. So a lot of times you can substitute a traditional skillet for a nonstick, but not in this case. No, but you don't need a special crepe pan either. We're gonna heat this up at medium. The key to this is making sure the pan is just hot enough and <laughs> not too hot. So we're gonna make a tester. I've got a teaspoon of batter here, right in the center of the skillet. And we're gonna wait 20 seconds and have a look at the color. So it's been 20 seconds, let's have a look. Looks Ooh! Right, just lightly brown, looks perfect. Mm. So each crepe is going to require about a third of a cup of this batter. I'm just gonna pour it right into the skillet. And you just wanna swirl the pan and give it a shimmy as you're doing it. That spreads out the batter really nicely. And you don't have to worry about making perfect crepes because we're gonna fold them up and roll them over. And so mm. you can't tell if it's a little spidery or it's not a perfectly round circle. Ooh. And as you can see, it's starting to brown lightly. You can see the edges curling away mm -hmm. and drying up. And that's a good indicator that it's done or really close. So let's have a peek. Oh, look at that. This looks great. I'm not looking for it to be perfectly uniformly browned because they're going to be reheated again and they'll get their color then. And notice she's not cooking the second side. This is a one side only crepe. Right, we just wanna make sure that it is cooked through so that when I put the next crepe on top, it doesn't stick. I'm gonna butter the pan one more time. You don't really have to butter 
every single time, especially if you have a great nonstick skillet, it's more insurance than anything. So I'm gonna keep making crepes till I run out of batter. It's gonna make about 12. So our crepes are done, filling's out. Let's make some blintzes. All right. I'm going to start you off with a crepe. And that's pretty sturdy. I mean, usually you think of a crepe, you think it's kind of delicate. These are easy to handle. Yeah, yeah. Each blintz gets two tablespoons of filling, and you want to lay the filling down in a two by four inch strip about two inches up from the oh, bottom. Oh, like a little burrito. Yeah. Well, and this little spatula is perfect for this kind of work. Yeah, it allows you to be pretty precise with the filling and a small amount of it. I've spread mine out a lot more than yours. Is that a problem? Nope, not okay. at all. So we're gonna fold up the bottom. All right. Then the sides. Mm-hmm. And then you just wanna roll it up into a little two by four inch packet. Ta-da! Perfect. Easy. So again, we're filling on the non-brown side so that the brown side of the crepe is on the outside. Now, we're going to cook these today, but we could put these in the refrigerator covered for 24 hours, or after you pop them into zipper lock bags, you can freeze them for a month. Oh, wow. It's a nice dessert to have in your back pocket for emergency entertaining. Yeah, emergency desserts. I like how long things. Oh, my blintzes are getting better. It's like making the crepes. The first one's <laughs> always a little meh. And then you get the hang of it, and it's really easy. So we're just going to keep going till they're all made. I have two tablespoons of unsalted butter here. It's melted and I've got the heat set at medium. I'm gonna add the crepes and we're gonna cook six at a time. Well, that's nice, that means you only have to make them in two batches, which is good if you're just about to serve dessert. So I'm gonna give these about two, maybe four minutes. I'm looking for them to get nicely browned. And if you notice, Lon put all the blintzes in the skillet seam side down. That helps seal the seam together so the filling won't leak out. I'm making sure to leave a little bit of space in between. That just helps them brown a little. Blintzes need easily, space. Right, and uh, you know how often we say don't touch the food after it gets in the pan? You should totally check these as you go. If there are hot spots or some of them are browning faster than others, you can kind of move them around and make sure they all look great. I'm giving this second side another two to four minutes. So let's have a peek at the second side. Ooh. Does that look great? Ooh. Those look amazing. Let's get these out of the pan. I'm gonna give this skillet a quick wipe and get this butter out of there. If I were to continue to cook with this, that butter would start to burn and we'd get these acrid, bitter flavors on our blintzes. Another two tablespoons of butter. Mm. So as soon as that butter is melted, I'm going to get the rest of the blintzes in mm. and we'll cook them through as well. Julia, don't these look great? They look amazing. Wait till you taste it. Oh. Let's get them out of the pan. You can tell she worked in a restaurant with her plating skills. <laughs> That's beautiful. Time to serve them up. Here's that gorgeous sauce we made earlier. Ooh, it almost looks like a little gem. That's just gorgeous. Can you imagine just pulling these out of your freezer and serving them to someone yeah, right. who happened to stop by? Oh, look at that filling inside. You can see how nice and soft it is once it gets heated up. <laughs> I love the texture of the crepe, the creamy filling, and then sort of that Heart raspberry sauce. It's so nice and bright, it just brings out that creamy filling. Oh, and the contrast of that nice crisp exterior. <laughs> Lon, these are amazing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So to make a classic cheese blintz, start by making a quick filling using cream cheese and lots of whole milk ricotta, a simple sauce using frozen raspberries, and an easy batter using just a whisk in a bowl. After testing the heat of the skillet by making a baby crepe, make full-sized ones and be sure to shake the pan just after you add the batter. Saute the filled blintzes with butter. And there you have it, from Cook's Country, a fancy but very easy recipe for cheese blintzes with raspberry sauce. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>